welcome everybody. And this is the first support session that I've done. Uh, I'm so thrilled to have you. I, I really, I've been waiting to do this too long, actually. Um, so, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm actually, instead of starting with, you know, hello, how are you? Uh, I'm not going to do that because we're going to do uh, questions after I do the presentation because the presentation is so important. And if you happen to have your, uh, your palette with you, that's great. If you don't, um, you know, that's fine too, because I'm going to go over palettes and in a second I'm going to share my screen. So, but I'm going to first put you guys on mute for that reason right there. Yeah. I'm muting everybody. Yes. Okay. Everybody's muted. Um, okay. So, hi. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm going to talk about just the palettes in general so you can see the difference in them for just for a moment. And then I'm going to, I'm going to actually talk about my own outfit. Um, in fact, I think I'll do that first. Um, so I think you all can see me and I'll kind of sit up here a little bit so you can see more of me. There we go. Ooh. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about why I'm wearing what I'm wearing. Um, let me just get up just a little higher. There we go. I think you all can see me, but I just want to make sure. So, <clears throat> So uh, the outside piece is a piece from uh, Serana uh, where I take people specialty shopping. Um, and this inner piece along with the, the top is, um, is from Donna M, which I'd really love to get my clients in uh, when they're ready to do that. And what you can notice is that um, there's a little kind of silvery, goldy button right here. So I didn't really wear a necklace because there's a lot going on here. And all I did was wear uh, some rose gold earrings because there's rose gold on the sequence. And um, I, what, I, what I love about this is that it's comfortable. Uh, I have on jeans underneath because I'm sitting at my desk and, you know, <laughs> I'm not out on a, on a business, you know, meeting. But if I were, I would be wearing pants that were the same color um, as the top because that's a really what I call a tube. And I love to dress tubes because then you can do beautiful jackets and stuff like that. And I would have probably uh, this belt on just so you can see. Uh, let me separate it out a little bit. It's a kind of a rose gold belt. And so um, I just thought you'd like to know, like to know how I put something together um, when I'm, when I'm dressing. And, uh, last piece before I look at, at palettes is, um, you know, one of, one of my, one of my color clients emailed me today and she said, what are my power colors? And it dawned on me because we're going to talk about all that tonight, that these are not really power colors. And, and what came to me is power dressing is not really power dressing. It's purposeful dressing because Power, the power that you are uh, using when you meet someone for the first time might be to make sure they trust you. And that's not going to be to wear a dramatic color. That's going to be to wear your eye extension or a uh, skin tone. And so I shifted today and I said, oh, I'm going to start talking, not so much tonight, but just, you know, briefly go over uh, purposeful versus power because we have this idea of power dressing and it really comes from a very chauvinistic place around men. And uh, I may be making that up, but I think that's true that women think they have to be power dressing to meet men in business. And my experience is that I dress purposefully for the event I'm going to, whether it's business or, or private or personal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to start talking about neutrals. If you have questions, just jot them down. And because um, we're going to have time for questions, and I have a lot of questions that people sent me. So um, this will we'll just move very pleasantly forward. OK, um, I'm going to unmute you guys for one second, because I want to make sure you can see my screen when I, um, when I do the share. So hold on a second. I just want to. Okay, so I want to get rid of a few things. I don't want to mess you guys up. Uh, there we go. Okay, 
Now I'm going to share my screen. Hmm. Okay. There we go. Can everybody see, excuse me, let me move that and then get this back. Uh, can everybody see these four palettes? Yes? Yes. 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 Three, three okay. Palettes. Well, there's one over here. There's one over a small one on the right. Oh. See it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. I, for some reason, when I took the picture, it was small. I have no idea why. Oh, okay. Okay. But uh, mute yourselves again, because uh, right now I, uh, I can't do that. So, um, what I want you to notice first is the difference in the colors. Now, what I did was I pulled four palettes that were kind of in the middle of all the base palettes. So, so it's not like, it's, these are not your palettes. <laughs> um, but I wanted to just show you the difference. So, you know, this is the spring palette and you can see the lightness in it. Um, you can see in the, in the summer palette, see the purple up here, you can see it's more dusty colored. And in the autumn palette, you can see there's more of a rust color, you know, even in here. And then in the winter palette, you can see how bright and bold it is. So I wanted you just to have an experience of the difference, even though sometimes the, the differences look subtle. Um, they're, they're very powerful. I also want you to notice as we're gonna go into uh, neutrals in just a second, that the only, uh, I mean, I know Robin's on here and I know she has black as a neutral <laughs> because she has very dark hair uh, and she's a vital spring. But you'll notice with the rest of these, and I did this on purpose, none of them are black except for the, uh, except for the winter. And because people get very um, lazy, uh, and it, I, call them, I call gray and black lazy colors unless you really have them. And a lot of times women, you know, uh, are wearing black because it's easy to get or whatever. But when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk, I'm going to just, um, I'm actually going to use the autumn one because it, it, it will do the same thing. But I like the way the colors, are, you can really see them. So what I want you to know, because when you did got your colors done, you got the how to use your colors, but I'm noticing that people don't know what it means. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, this is your formal neutral. So the first one that you have in your palette, the darkest one, is your formal neutral. Well, you can do lots of things with that. And, it, you know, you can have a suit in that if you're, you know, really need to be serious in business or whatever. Um, it's great to have. However, uh, formal neutral, dark neutral, alternate noodle, neutral, neutral, neutral. Um, those, those three are your neutrals that you want to build your wardrobe on. That's the important piece about neutrals. They are the foundation of any wardrobe. Now, what Suzanne Cagle used to say is, I mean, you know, because she had her way of doing things. She would have people build on one, um, uh, one neutral for like a year. And I don't think people really operate that way so anymore. So what I would suggest is that you really look at your, sometimes you have four neutrals. When I customize a palette, um, you know, sometimes people get four or five neutrals uh, in, the, in these darker shades. But what you want to look at is which one or two do you want to build. Now, when I say build, what I mean is this. And I'm going to take this one right here, this beautiful deep teal. So if somebody, if this was their formal neutral and this was the one they liked the best, I would say get uh, pants in it, get uh, a tank in it or a, a long sleeve uh, top or whatever uh, to make sure that what I said earlier, you have a tube to dress, T-U-B-E, a tube. Because what that does is it gives you continuity between the top and the bottom of you. Now, <clears throat> let me just stop for a second. I want you to pay real attention to these neutrals because when you go to shop and you find them, then you start to have a canvas to build the rest of your wardrobe on. Now, I'm going to talk about related whites. There's the related white right there. 
And if it's hard to see that one, if we move over to spring, you can see that related white. Related whites are very important because when you're wearing the right white, it will make you look rested. It will make your face look beautiful. When you're wearing too um, white of a white, it will obviously make you look shadowed and not as beautiful as you are. And what people will see when it's too white is a white shirt. They won't see your face. And that reminds me of something. Remember that dressing is about seeing your beautiful face. It's about dressing so that your face looks alive. So when somebody's wearing black and white stripes and they should never have them on, people don't notice their face. They just notice black and white stripes. So if you're dressing to be seen by others, and you should be, because you know most of the people that I have in my, uh, as my clients are doing great things in the world. They want to be visible. And when you are dressing so that um, your face looks alive, then you are being more visible. And people will take you more seriously. Um, the next one, so related white is also a neutral. And in warm climates, obviously, you're going to have things that are in your related white from top to bottom because you're going to need them. Um, the next thing here is your casual neutral. Now, I'm going to say two things about this. And by the way, on the back of your palette, you'll see FN for formal neutral, DN for dark neutral, AN for alternate neutral, RW for related white, uh, CN for casual neutral. Now, and then we'll do the rest of them. Casual neutral and alternate neutral are oftentimes hair colors. Not always. Now, somebody like Robin, who's a vital spring, her, her darkest color, which is black, is, is kind of her hair color. And so that, you know, it's her formal neutral, but it's also her hair color. So somewhere in here, we're going to find uh, your, your hair color. Why is hair color so important? It's important because everyone should have a top, a pair of pants, accessories, a belt, and shoes in your hair color. Why? Because it connects you from the top of your head to your feet. And what people really want to see is harmony. And on top of that, we put a beautiful jacket like the one I have on. Or, you know, you put, uh, that's why I love um, jackets that have some pattern to them. Because when you do um, a, you know, a tube underneath, then it gives you a lot of possibility in what to cover it with and what to play with. So you look tonight and you look to see where is your hair color. And we make sure that you, you know, if you're, if you're getting top, bottom, I mean, you can get a suit or a jacket in that too, certainly, but make sure that you've got a belt, make sure that you've got um, uh, jewelry and shoes in your hair color. So uh, whoever that is, I'm just going to make sure you, make sure you mute yourself. So next, next neutral, interestingly enough, which has some color, right, is your eye color. Now, you've heard me over and over and over talk about your eye color. On the back of your palette, that will say PN, which is personal neutral. Your eye color is magic. Your eye color is the thing that you wear when you meet a new client, when you want somebody to trust you, when you don't want them to be scared of you, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. But there's some ways that you can mix your, um, your eye color with a neutral or an eye color um, with um, one of your dramatics or, you know, there's just all sorts of places to play with it. But, but oftentimes, um, whoever's making that noise, please mute yourself. You can hit the mute button. It's down at somewhere at the bottom. But, uh, but personal neutral is really important and it's your eye color. As you know, this is your skin tone. This is your first skin tone. This is the color of your actual skin. And look at this in the, uh, in the spring. You know, you can see the, the, light, the lightness here, whereas the one for um, autumn is darker. And 
Um, and interestingly, even though I can't make this too much larger, if you look, let me see if I can make it a little bigger. Let me see. No, can't. Uh, but what you can see in the, in, the, uh, in the winter is that their skin is usually much lighter, unless I'm doing an exotic winter or something. So let me move this over. Okay, so your, your first um, skin tone is what you can use for foundation. You can use it. Now, here's the other piece. And again, I'm like a broken record on this. Skin tone, your first skin tone and your second skin tone. And look how much deeper this skin tone is than say the spring one. You can really see the differences in these. Um, you want to have, you want to have an outfit, you know, top, bottom, if you have a jacket, that's great. Although I love to do more pattern jackets and stuff like that, but accessories in your skin tone, jewelry, belt, um, shoes. And it, what's great now, and I'm going to show it at the end is I, I did some things on where to buy some skin tones this, this uh, spring. So you'll see them at the end. But for instance, um, this isn't my skin tone, it's more of my, my rose gold metal. But I use this uh, because it's rose gold and I have a lot of that in, in my metals. It also works for me, not quite as a skin tone, but it picks up my skin tone. And so your metal, uh, you could play around with that also. So skin tone, oh, so the, your next skin tone, which is your deeper skin tone, is what you can use for blush, you can use it for you know, the lighter one you can use for light nail polish, the deeper one you can use for nail polish, you can use obviously to wear, you can use it um, as blush. And, and so these are considered your neutrals to some extent. The skin tones get a little bit out of neutral, but these are your neutrals. So let's do it from here, from uh, eye extension to your deepest neutral. Build your wardrobe on that. Now, we get skin tone and then look at the difference in these reds. Oh my goodness. And let me pull up so that summer doesn't feel bad. I, although you can't see the summer one very good. I didn't do a good job on this picture, but you can see it's really, you know, different. And if you look at the winter, oh my goodness, it's so much brighter. So reds. Reds are really important, but they're not so good for business. <laughs> so usually what we say in business is we wanna, we wanna wear other colors besides red, but you can wear your skin tone. And what's great about skin tone is that it's an alternate white. And for some people, I suggest that they use skin tone uh, when they don't have a lot of contrast uh, instead of navy and the related white, I would say their navy and their skin tone. So for instance, um, with uh, Kate, um, I'm not, this is pretty close to hers because it's a rose tone summer, but um, I would say for Kate that I would want to put this beautiful skin tone with this deep purple or this beautiful teal or even the brown, whichever she has or all of them. And it would be beautiful on her. And it wouldn't just be white because she's not somebody that has a lot of contrast. And so we don't want people to have a lot of contrast if, they, if their coloring doesn't have a lot of contrast. Now, people look at me and say, oh, she's got dark hair. But I have medium to low contrast. So if I tried to wear uh, white and navy, I can wear it. I can wear my white and navy. But it never feels as comfortable to me as when I wear my own skin tone. And so you want to play with it and, and start to be aware of it and start to be conscious about it. So now we move to dramatics. And on, on your palette, they're D1 and D2. Now that's a place where I often give people several, you know, sometimes they get four, five, you know, whatever. Okay, so I'm talking about dramatics. These first two are dramatics, dramatic one, dramatic two. Now these are uh, alternate one, alternate two. What that means is they're not as strong as the dramatics, 
but they still have more energy, certainly, than uh, the neutrals and more than the subdued, which is right here. So, so let's talk about dramatics and let me get a little water. Dramatics are when you're leading a seminar, giving a talk most of the time. I say that in parentheses or you know in, in quotes because sometimes you want to make sure that you, if you're wearing a dramatic, that you wear it with one of your skin tones. So it softens the effect that you'll have and people will feel that you're more available to them and yet you can also wear something that's a dramatic and makes you lead and, and, and supports you leading. Oftentimes, um, what I, so, so let's go to the power of dressing versus purposeful dressing. So when this person asked me uh, about power dressing today, she, I'm pretty sure she said, oh, she said, what are my power colors? And I said, well, your dramatics are this and this. And, you know, I showed it to her. But you don't always want to wear dramatics because they will not always be powerful. They might be overwhelming to somebody or they might just be um, not somebody. Somebody's making noise. And I would like for you to put yourself on mute right now. I can't do it. Um, actually, I'll stop the share so I can really do this because it's um, oops. I want to mute all. There we go, because people are going to have to listen to this, and I want to make sure that they can hear. Okay, so, um, so, so, <clears throat> when you're leading drama, dramatics are great. Um, when you are supporting somebody, let's say um, somebody's giving a talk, and you're there with them, but you're in the back of the room supporting them, then you might wear your alternate one or two, because you're still supporting. You're not the leader, and yet you want to, you know, be present to them, and you don't want to overwhelm them, but you also want to be seen. And so, um, actually, I'm going to pull this spring now, because I think it shows it really clearly. So, for the spring, uh, this, is, this is her dramatic, this is a dramatic, this is her alternate, first alternate, and support color. This is her second alternate support color. And then, um, and you can, and again, with all of these, you can have suits, dresses, tops, bottoms, blouses, you know, you name it, in, in, in all of these colors. Um, you probably won't, in your dramatics, unless you wanted it, you probably wouldn't have that much jewelry unless you want to. For instance, I have so much purple in my palette that it would make most people sick. I mean, <laughs> the only thing I can't wear is a really, really blue purple, a really, really cool purple. Um, I do have a necklace in purple because it's so, um, well, because I have a purple neutral, I have a purple uh, dramatic, I have a purple alternate. <laughs> so, so, um, so for me, having a purple necklace is really important. Um, for instance, uh, for this person in the, who's a summer, she has purple as a neutral. She might want to have a purple necklace because she could, and she might want to have purple shoes, and she might want to have a purple belt. You have to choose and decide what works for you and, and also what you're going to wear the most. For most people who know me well, they know that purple and I are very good friends, so thank goodness I have it in my palette. So <clears throat> next, uh, but, but for most people, from red on to uh, these drama, dramatic and support colors, you know, often you're going to have them, you can have a whole outfit in them. I have whole outfits in them. And when I first started wearing them, it scared the living daylights out of me. And I wouldn't wear them. I would not wear a whole outfit of a dramatic. Now I have no problem doing it. It was uncomfortable, but when you have the right jacket, so it's not just all dramatic, you know, but when you have the right jacket that goes with it, it can really be beautiful and you can be very purposeful with the way you use dramatics and, and alternates. So the next piece is subdued. And for, for a summer, this is subdued. Let me go to the autumn. Uh, this is her subdued. 
And it's interesting, you know, I was looking at this because this subdued and this, they're not, they're not the same. Obviously this is more blue uh, and this is, you know, more green. And, but in some ways they look similar, but this would show up as a subdued color on this person. Now, what's really nice about subdued colors is that they're almost like neutrals, but not quite. And so they, so remember a neutral is going to show up on you. Um, not bright and bold, you know, it's, it's going to be beautiful on you, but even if it has a lot of color, which if we look at um, winter and they have black on black on a winter for most people, for most black, for most winters, some people don't have a black, but most people do that black is not going to be overwhelming to them. It's just going to be beautiful, but it's going to be a canvas that they can that for, and let me just say this about winters that they will probably put red on top of <laughs> or this beautiful purple. That would be how it would operate. If you know winters, they really like red and black and um, it's very special for them. So, so, but a subdued color is something that you could get a suit in. You could get, but you can do blouses or whatever. And it would read almost, almost like a neutral, but it just has more color to it. And it has a little bit more life to it, which is really fun. Now, patterns, patterns, metals, and pastels. When I give people patterns, it's just so they see what, the base looks like. So for instance, what we don't want for this person is gigantic blocks of color. Uh, with, with this spring, you know, you can notice, you see kind of like a flower and it's softer. This is an early spring palette, this, this one here. And you can see that the pattern is like really soft. The prints are softer. And, um, Oh, excuse me. This is the summer palette. I'm completely losing myself here. This is the summer palette, which is why it's so blended. Excuse me for making a mistake. So you can see on, on the summer palette how blended it is. Let me grab the spring one. Whereas on the spring palette, you can see more definition. And so um, you want to look at that when you're looking at your, at your prints and your patterns. And let me um, just pull the um, classic winter with this winter one it's harder to see but she actually has some lace pattern in here and some things like that so now we talk about metals metals are really great and i know you know when people first come, start coming to me um they you know they say oh i wear silver all the time i don't like gold or whatever well metals are really important because metals are based on your skin so if somebody doesn't have silver, it's because their skin does not like it. Now, when people start to get gray hair, I always update their palette because their, their skin may be very similar to what it was, but because of the gray hair, they will be able to carry silver. And so, but it might not be bright silver, it might be uh, uh, more dulled or whatever. And so we have to be careful about that. Um, I think I've given Robin silver. Uh, I think she has it and she's got more gray in her hair now. But what you can notice is for the autumn palette right here, it's like she's got gold, but she also has a little bit of rose copper in here. And so um, she's got a lighter gold, she's got a darker gold, and then she goes into some kind of rose coppery colors and then another gold. For the summer, you know, it's like this not shiny silver at all, rose gold. And often summers have rose gold. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This, God, I'm getting these mixed up. I apologize. Yeah, that was right. And then for the spring, these are pretty much light gold, some silver, but, but it's kind of a light gold with a little bit of silver. And so metals, the reason they're so important, and I'll pull this, the uh, winter up, and look at this winter, all silver and then some darker, some darker like black metals. And this one is a golden black, but it's mostly silver on this and shiny silver and platinum. So the reason that metals make so much difference is because they're around your face. 
And so if they're not the right metal, they're going to not support you looking alive and beautiful. All people will see is the metal that's wrong. See, what you want to remember, and this is why when people ask me, well, can't I wear the black pants, you know, even though they have no black in their palette, I said, people's eye will go to your black pants because we always notice what's wrong, not because we're bad human beings, but because it stands out. So last piece here are pastels. And pastels, you know, oftentimes in lingerie, in your environment, whatever. But, you know, some people say, oh, you know, we don't wear them too much. But I think sometimes pastels are just fabulous. And if you live in a warm climate, you need pastels. So, so you want to uh, play with them and, um, and enjoy them because they're beautiful. Hang on one second. And you can just see, you know, how different... Let me just pull these pastels so you can see how different they are. Like these, these pastels in the spring have more warmth to them. The summer is more cool. These are uh, more, you know, with the autumn palette, they have a little bit of black in them. So they're, they're more sh a little bit shaded and, uh, and toasted. So you can see the differences. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, Whew. Stop sharing. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. And I'm going to unmute you. Ha. Huh. And how is everybody first? Great. Good. Good. Now I, I want to ask a question before I start in um, answering questions. Was this useful to you guys? Yeah. yeah very. Yeah, it was very helpful because I didn't know what all the letters stood for. So now it makes a lot more sense. Yes. And it's funny because even though I send people the PDF on how to use your colors, they yeah. don't make the connection. No. no. So thank you. And, you know, everybody on this call is really smart, it's <laughs> which is why I decided I would do this. Um, it's almost like once you start using the colors, yeah. you know, and, and I, it's like I forgot what you told me. I knew you told me. Yeah. But it's like once you start to use it, you're ready to hear that information. Yeah, thank yes. you for that, Kate. Thank you. Because um, you know, I'm going to record this, and it's going to go out to everybody who's done Dress for Your Future and Natural Marketing Style. But that's really good feedback for me. And you know, we're, we're going to do, um, we're going to do a support uh, evening on style facets um, and a bunch of other things. Because I really want you guys to educate how to shop and what to shop for. Just... Um, all the pieces so that you feel, even though I love to shop with people and I love, I love to do closets, as you all know, um, <laughs> Elizabeth, Kate, um, know that really well. <laughs> yes. We, oh my God. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but it, it makes such a difference when I'm in a closet because, um, one, we clear out what needs to be cleared out. Oftentimes though, we save things that people are surprised by. Um, and I make sure that people get somewhere between, I don't know how many Kate got, but Elizabeth has gotten many, many outfits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like 20, 30. Yeah, in, in a sitting. So it really, it saves you money. But it also, what, what you have when I leave that day is a way of dressing because we take pictures of everything. So that all you, it's all together from jewelry to whatever. We also see what you might be missing so that we can fill those things in. Because what I find is that, and I'll just add this piece, and I think it's happened for everybody. Um, when I go to closets, the thing that I notice most often is not all the mistakes. You know, everybody makes mistakes. There, there was a day when I had my colors done, I brought home my palette, and I looked in my closet and I cried. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just share that I had every season in my closet every season folks and i i would put the palette up <laughs> up to the to the clothing the piece of clothing and i'd say well it's close and my my intuition and my whole being would say ann this is not the color <laughs> <laughs> and it was so sad hi kelly i just saw you on there hi. um it was very sad those those days so if you are going through that and having that experience please let me come to your closet <laughs> because I will make it so much more tender and, it, and, and you'll understand and you'll feel good about what you got rid of. 
Uh, but more importantly, we'll have lots of things put together. Because what I want for people is to just look in their closet, look at the pictures that we put together and go, I'm wearing that today. That takes about two minutes. But the thing that I notice most often when I go to a closet is, so let me say it here. People have this teeny, these teeny tiny little necklaces. Oh God, don't do it. Okay, little teeny tiny necklaces need to be like quadrupled. It doesn't really matter how tall you are or whatever. Most people need something that fills in their neckline. Now, for a spring, it can be lots of little pieces, but to make sure that it has some, not weight heavy, but it has some um, impact. Um, and for everybody else, that's true too. Um, after I was in Kate's closet, I went to Serana and I picked out about three necklaces for her and took pictures of them because it, it you know, I wanted her to have something that um, she could use all the time, would fill in um, with pretty much anything she wore. And on the day, I, I hope you don't mind me using you, Kate. Um, no, okay, because you were awesome. Um, but on the day I was there, she had a lot of smaller necklaces. And what I did was I just put them all to, I put lots of them together, which, which works. But I also want people to have um, two or three necklaces that are, that are big enough that really have an impact because it gives you, um, talk about power as opposed to, you know, purposeful dressing, which is what I want to stress. A good necklace and good earrings give you, a, they, they give you a power in your dressing that's not about power dressing, but it's about impact and looking complete. Looking complete is really important. And so, you know, what I said earlier for anybody who wasn't on the call, the reason I don't have on a necklace tonight is because I have this on. I have a lot of activity on this uh, beautiful jacket, and I have this really pretty little button here. Now, if it was any other thing, I would have a necklace on, but this is my necklace along with the button and with the design in this uh, beautiful jacket. So, <clears throat> anybody else who wants to say something before I answer questions, because I've got a bunch of them and they're fun. Anybody? No? Okay. <clears throat> So I got some great questions. I want to thank you. And I'm, and Kate, I'm, in fact, I think I'm going to do Kate first because Kate had a really great question. Then I'm going to go to all clothing questions, um, clothing style, etc. So let me get rid of everything that's not Kate because Kate sent me an adorable picture of her palette that she took along with part of her leg, which I thought was very cute. <laughs> Oh, where is Kate? Hang on one second. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Whoops. Sorry, I have to get this uh, just one second here. This is the one thing. Oh, I have to clear everything off here. Ah, here it is. There's Kate. Okay, now I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> it's so pretty on that rug, Kate. No, I don't think I have your leg, Kate. Okay, but we are going to show Kate's palette. So the thing that Kate asked, that's you, right, Kate? No. No, that's not oh, me. No, that's not you. Hang on, that's somebody else. I apologize. Jeez. Kate. That was Lucy's. I'm sorry. Excuse me, because I had you all up here and everything. Uh, let me shop. Stop, stop. Mine is really close to the center palette you were showing. I don't it know. It is. I just wanted to pull yours up because, mm -hmm. because I... Because I had the picture of it. What? Yeah, I sent it to you. I know you did. I saw it at the bottom of that window that you were looking at, Anne. <sighs> you did? I did, in the list. Kate. You had all your palettes and then Kate at the bottom. I did. Oh. I don't know why it's not showing up. Please forgive me, Kate. I mean, I, I can pull the... If you yeah. pull up oh, I, know where it is. I know where it is, Kate. Oh, okay. I was so careful to not lose it that I put it in the file with what I'm doing tonight. Okay, so mm -hmm. hang on one sec. I know exactly where it is. Excuse me for my stupidness there for a second. All right. There, Kate McKinnon. Yeah, with the little <laughs> leg. Okay, hold on. There we go. Now let me grab the share screen. Oh, okay. Now I got gotcha. you. Okay. And that is Kate's leg, um, which we're so... Yeah, there it is. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is really important for people to see because 
this is her first dramatic. Uh, this is a dramatic. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is probably a dramatic. I, I can't see it right now, but I'm guessing that probably these are. Uh, so, she, so she has several dramatics. See how many she has? And then she has some alternates. And then there's her uh, subdued. So the question that I always ask Kate is what color, this is when I'm coaching people and they want to know like, what should I use on my website? What color really moves you the most in your palette? I like, uh, let's see, what's it called? I actually like the raspberry red. And then yes. I, I like the subdued, but the raspberry red is what draws me the most. Uh, uh, this one right here? Mm hmm Okay. So I want to give you a couple suggestions. I think that's beautiful. And there's not one thing wrong with it because this is the thing I want everybody to understand. When it's in your color palette, it's your essence. So you don't have to worry about what any graphic designer says about, oh, maybe you shouldn't use red. Um, because it's your essence, it's going to be beautiful. And here's what you could do, because you're not going to just use one color on a, you know, on a, on a website. You're going to need two or three. So you could use this as one of your colors. You mm -hmm. could use your eye color as one. Beautiful. You could use one of your, you could use one of your neutrals for your font color. Mm -hmm. Because font on a website needs to be dark enough that you can actually read it. And, um, and it will be gorgeous. Now, I'm going to do something. Does that make sense, Kate? It does. It does. Yeah, because I knew I was attracted to that color, but it's like, okay, and then what do you do with it? We know yeah. what you put with it. Well, one thing that I might recommend to you is if you decide that you, if you want to uh, do a session with me, just, you know, like a half an hour, I think mm -hmm. it would be worth it because we could play around with it. But I think mm -hmm. if you need it, do it, okay? Because yeah. I think there are, or, or pull some things together and then let's have half hour, mm -hmm. you know, so that I can tell you, so you don't make mistakes. Um, but I think this is a beautiful color. And, uh, but the, we always want to make sure font is deep enough uh, so that it shows and it's easily readable. Here's the thing about websites and anything online. What people get confused about, or if their eyes get fuzzy when they look, they will click off your website. And what we always say is confusion equals no. And confusion on a website is oftentimes when people can't read what's written. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to say one last thing about websites. In fact, what I'm going to do is uh, stop sharing this. I'm going to go to my own website for one quick second. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to do, uh, you know, uh, close. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, Uh, okay, let me see if I can. Okay. So I'm going to share the screen again with you guys. I, I'm the first person who says this was not the easiest thing I've ever done. I mean, I have a great designer, so we'll be. But you can see how this is such a, so beautiful in terms of my own, the way my coloring is, it's, I mean, it's my palette, you know, so beautiful. Can everybody can see it, right? Yep. Yeah. You know, this did not come first, but I wanted to show you something because um, uh, I want to show you how I, one thing that's really important on websites. So hang on, we'll let this load. Okay. So I'm just going to go to the coaching page. One of the things you'll notice when I do a website, when I have it done, come on, Beyond Business. There we go. Please notice that I use a couple of colors that I bold things because the eye wants to come down the page and, it, and, and people on websites scan. They do not read all the time. So you want to make sure that you've broken things up in a way or uh, bolded or whatever so that it's readable and so that it pulls the eye down the page. So I just want to make sure I said that to you, Kate. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, and notice that, you know, I used a couple of colors. 
uh, but it all looks, you know, good, I guess. Oh, oh the, my ebook. And, yeah, what were you say? And are the colors that you used for um, your website for the font, are they two of your neutrals? Uh, where? on uh, Here? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh you know this this purple might not be a complete neutral for me uh, it you know i have so many purples that it's hard for me to tell uh but it's a pretty neutral purple to me but this okay. is um and this is not exactly you know i mean i have teals you know because sometimes when you get into website colors you know they you know you get the website color you don't get your palette but mm -hmm. this would be more of these would be more of my um of my dramatics okay and let me just go real, let me just go real quick uh to um uh to dress for your future just because we did it differently and even though <clears throat> even though uh coral is not one of my colors anymore because i'm not a spring it really really worked uh it worked when i when this got written up and so I love it. There's just something about it that really works here. Mm -hmm. And it, and it, again, it pulls, um, my designer came up with that, but it, it pulls people's eye down the page. Okay. Okay. Here comes my ebook again. Everybody needs that. Okay. So Kate, does that answer some of your questions? Yeah, that's great. That's really helpful. I wasn't sure, you know, if it was meant to be one particular aspect of my palette or, but it sounds like I can really mix. Yes. Yeah. It, and uh, yeah, pull some things together and then let's do like a half an hour because then you won't make any mistakes and, and it'll be fabulous and fun. And you can also uh, keep me in, if you have a graphic designer, you can also keep me in the loop and just send me stuff if I'm having a session or so with you. Okay? That's what I do for my clients. So we're going to talk about clothes now. Oh. Huh. Miss Lily asks, what shape and type of glasses and sunglasses should I wear? Well, Lily is a spring, <clears throat> so, but I'm going to talk about design lines in, uh, just in general because that's what you use when you're looking at um, uh, glasses. So I'm a summer, and if you can see my glasses, they're uh, kind of slightly oval. They're slightly softened. Uh, they're not square. They're not rectangular. They have a little bit of a feeling of, you know, elongating, but, but they're very uh, softened because I'm a summer. This is a kind of a perfect um, example of, of a summer glass, eyeglass. So <clears throat> Lily, Lily has a lot of pixie. She's the gammon and natural. And um, so <clears throat> she can do, I would not do something real, real round, even though her design lines are round. She could do something that's rounded and maybe comes to a little bit of a point upward, you know, because she has points in her face. Um, so, so what she wouldn't do is something that's rectangular uh, or square. That, that would not work. So anything that's kind of has a circle or a softened feeling about it or comes to a little point. And for her, because she's so playful, it could be really fun. She could really play with that. Um, for somebody like Susan James, oh, I said Susan's last name, but I guess she won't be offended. <laughs> for Susan, um, uh, Susan's in autumn. And so she can do um, rectangular, uh, she can do angles, and it will be um, beautiful on her. And she might want to have it a little bit softened, but, but basically she can do a rectangle. Um, Robin's a spring, uh, Kate's a summer. Uh, I don't know if my winter is on here. I don't think she is, but a winter can do an elongated oval or something that's kind of dramatic that way. Even a, a long rectangle would work. They could, because uh, winters can have uh, parallel lines and they can have long ovals. Whereas summers do just a regular oval and um, uh, a teardrop or a teardrop is great or just a curve. And so that's how you look at it. And a spring has points and stars and also roundness. So we just wouldn't want it to be too square or something like that. So that's the answer to that question. <clears throat> what would be a good uniform for me to wear on a day-to-day -day basis, kids to school, et cetera? Okay, here's what I think about that. Because <laughs> some of you see me in my not better days. Um, 
I say that comfort is the first thing when you're just running around doing, you know, doing things. So my feeling, this is why I love Donna M clothes so much because I can't feel them and they seem like a pajama for me. But, but I recommend, you know, she's a spring. I recommend jeans, a cute top, a cute jacket, and some cute earrings. And, and Lily's 5'8", so she can wear like a, a bigger earring. She has a little bit of drama. And, um, and that would be adorable. You know, as long as you feel good in it and you're not just wearing some sweats with a sweat jacket, although I've done that before, um, have fun with it. And, you know, the other thing, too, everybody knows who's on this call that I totally love RMS beauty makeup. I'm, it's the thing. I see people's faces transform after I put it on there. Right, everybody who I put it on? Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Uh, um, and then I can't stop looking at them. Lily was the last one. It was like I just stood around and looked at her after about 10 minutes. Um, but I think that if you use something like RMS – and then you've got a cute top and you've got, you know, jeans on. You're done for the day and a cute pair of earrings. That's great. Just make sure you feel pretty. And, you know, I, one, I want to say a couple of things here. Um, you know, there are lots of places to get cute tops, you know, and T-shirts. She's a spring, but for summers and anybody. H&M, uh, Uniglo, The Gap, um, if you're paying more anthropology, but not for cute little t-shirts and stuff. And for a spring, a t-shirt, and for all of you, actually, a t-shirt is great for, 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 again, I'll go to design line here. <clears throat> if you're a spring, you're going to have a more circular neckline or a softened V or a V. Okay. Cause you've got a point. Um, somebody like Susan, she can have angles. She could have a deep V. Um, she could have a square neckline. Um, as long as it wasn't too wide for her face. Um, uh, somebody who is a summer can have a, a rounded neckline, a heart neckline, a softened V, or an oval neckline. See, this is kind of oval for me. And a winter can have a, a, a long oval. They could have a, you know, something that was a little bit square to, to do the parallel lines uh, like that. And most people can wear a boat neck. So you have lots of choices here. <clears throat> I think we kind of covered speaking engagements, but let me just say it quickly. Yeah. That, um, I'm not rushing through this, you guys. We're not going to just be an hour. We'll, we'll be longer. But aren't you having fun? Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> um, what to wear speaking. Okay. <clears throat> if you, you, it depends on your audience. I would say that... <clears throat> You might do a neutral with a skin tone, depending on your audience. If you were supposed to be really leading people, uh, a dramatic with your skin tone. Um, I would, uh, if, if it was something where people were, you know, very tender or whatever, I might make sure that I wore um, uh, uh, my eye extension or if, I, if I, I might wear a skin tone and then just put a beautiful jacket over it. So I want you to play with your colors like that. Um, I hope that makes sense. And it's kind of like what I said before. It's purposeful dressing, not power dressing. Um, but I do think that when you're speaking that it's fine to wear a dramatic or a support color. It's just what feels best on you. And you might not want to wear a whole outfit in, 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 in dramatic. You might want to make that your jacket. But, you know, and again, why I love um, to, to shop with my clients at Serana, because then what I've got is pat beautiful patterns that will probably fit with several of their basics underneath. Uh, best style of skirt and dress for me. Uh, I'm not going to answer that right now because I'm not quite sure. Uh, okay, but I love this. What to wear when I meet high profile people for the first time. When you wear your colors you are always ready to meet any person on the planet. High profile, depend, it would, again, just like I said for speaking, it would depend on what kind of meeting you're having with that person. Uh, it, and this is what's so interesting and why I'm so glad this power versus purposeful came up today. Because that person might be soft-spoken, and if you walked in in a dramatic, it would blow them away. 
And so what you might do is wear something like a skin tone with maybe a beautiful neutral because again, and a beautiful necklace. So what you want to do is make sure that you're dressed for the event, not the power. Because when you're dressing from essence, you're always going to be powerful. One thing I also want to say about this is I have a big thing about you being the one who sets the mood for the meeting. And what we noticed years ago was that when people would try to power dress and, you know, they were black when they didn't have it and, you know, stuff like that. What would occur is that you open your, so I'll give you an example for myself. If I walk in on black because I am, so I'm a, I'm an anomaly in the color world. People, people crazy. My coloring is summer, but my personality, I have a spring personality. And so, and I have no black in my wardrobe. So if I walk in in black, which is the stillest color, if you're spring and you walk in in the stillest color that is available, which is black, and you open your mouth, it's going to confuse people. That's all there is to it. And so if I walked in in black and then I opened my mouth with all the way that I move around, People would, it, 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 it's, it would be so confusing for people. And we don't want to do that. We want to set the mood and we want to look and be harmonious so they can rest their eye. Because remember, people make a choice about you in 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, any other questions that you have? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, what? Anybody? Well, Dan? Yes. yes. Oh, somebody. So the question is, it's personal. Yeah. Given that I have black in my palette, but I move around like such a freaking spring, if I were speaking in front of people, would I avoid that black? Is this Robin? It is. Oh, Robin, you can wear black. Um, it's in your palette and it's your hair color. Okay. So, so what I would say to you, in fact, what I'm going to do right this minute is I'm going to pull up, not your exact palette, but I'm going to pull up a vital spring palette. Um, hang on one sec. Okay. Cause you know, I wave my arms a lot. Yes, I do, honey. <laughs> hang on. We're, okay. So I'm going <laughs> to, she waves her arms a lot, you guys, <laughs> which is really weird, but you know, what can we say? Okay. So this is a vital spring palette and you can see how, bright it is because remember it's the closest to uh it's the closest to winter but it's not a winter so she has clear bright colors um the the thing that i probably wouldn't do robin and you have other colors besides these it's just a classic kind of palette but mm -hmm. um i would never put you in black and red because that really is um for winters um but i would feel really comfortable you being in black and your skin tones. Okay. These are skin tones, the pinker one and this one. And the pinker one, you could really play around with. And, um, you know, uh, I forget the other colors I gave you because I don't have it in front of me, but, uh, you know, the other thing you could do, if, if you have a green and you're dark neutral, that would also be really beautiful for you and also the brown. And, and did I, I gave you some gray, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gray would be in a, uh, no, I don't want you to go that way. It's not going to be good enough. Um, I would say the, the black, I would say the green and the brown that you could mix with, with, you know, any of these and it'd be really pretty except for the red and black. I would not do that. Okay, I mean, great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. You, okay, good. Let me stop sharing. So any other questions before I talk about where you can buy skin tones this spring? <laughs> I've got this Kelly. Yeah. Um, I'm officiating at a wedding. Yes. And I'm kind of leaning towards support colors. What color? Or, um, support colors. I'm a summer rose, so I was I was looking at one of the blues. Oh, I think that'd be really nice. You're a rose tone summer. Why yeah. let me just pull that right up. <laughs> just for fun. Rose tone or the summer palette. I have so many I'll tell you. The rose tone summers that I've done uh, in the last year, you all just love to come around me. Yes. <laughs> uh, any, uh, any of your support colors would be beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Gorgeous. So gorgeous. Would, gorgeous. Huh? Would that be better than like a skin tone or one of the neutrals? 
Yeah, because you're at a wedding, you know? And uh, I think it'd be beautiful. I okay. love that idea. I think that's, I think that's great. You know, back in the old days, uh, what they would probably say about a, um, <laughs> what they would probably say about a support color is, is lovely and an evening gown. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it'll be beautiful when you're officiating a wedding. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Thank you. That's it. That was it on that. Okay, great. Um, any other questions that you have? No? Okay, so I'm going to pull up uh, skin tones and I'm going to talk about those just a little bit. That was like my little surprise for people. I actually pulled um, where they've got a bunch of them. Okay, can you all see that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Let me get rid of all this stuff behind it. Hang on one sec. Let me just pull this down. Okay. <clears throat> so I had so much fun uh, when I was out the other day and I realized that, um, that I could show you, this is from H and M. It's $39. H and M cute bomber jacket in a skin tone. Hmm. This is a great skin tone. And one of the things I want to mention is that trench coats are great in your skin tone. It's a great way to use a tr that to, to create a, skin, uh, a trench coat is in a skin tone. Shoe, adorable, $9.99. Mm -hmm. <laughs> More H&M, adorableness. Yes, short coat. Mm -hmm. I just wanted you to get that. See, one of the things about skin tone, and the reason I press it so much, is because um, uh, I, I want people to, to use it a lot simply because, um, and, and buy it, but I don't want you to have to spend a million dollars on it. And so um, I, I think this is um, H&M also because it's $35. Um, so I think that's true. However, uh, this is um, either Free People or Anthropology. In fact, let me just, yeah, I won't worry about that. This is Free People or, or Anthropology. Uh, this is uh, shoes from anthropology. And these are, these are kind of close to skin tones, all of them. I mean, I, I tried to choose as many different kinds of, uh, you know, skin tone possibilities as I could show you just for fun. Let's see if I'm, yeah. But I, what I wanted to do was just make you aware that stores all over, Free People, Anthropology, and H&M have them everywhere. Oh, and Forever 21, and Forever 21, now has plus sizes. And why I like places like H&M and, and um, you know, 421, especially because they have plus sizes now, is because you can buy skin tones but not be um, committed to them for the rest of your life. You know, it's like I have several skin tone tanks from H&M, uh, from and I know that when I wear them out, I just throw them away. So, so when you see things like that, they're not going to be that expensive. Um, but they really can serve a purpose. And when you're done with them, you can be done with them. But th those places usually have them. Oh, and Uniglow, I haven't looked in right now, but Uniglow also usually has them. Uh, but, but what I like about Forever 21, H&M, uh, Anthropology, and Free People is that they're more feminine styles. And so um, <clears throat> that, that makes it nicer. Sometimes the gap and Uniglow are just a little bit too athletica you know, and that's not what most of you need. Um, so would you, and let me just ask you before we complete tonight, uh, would you guys like to do a, a, a session on, on style facets? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Well, that'll be fun. Okay. Uh, and any other ideas you have, please email me and let me know because it's so much fun to have you. So did you get value tonight? Absolutely. 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 Yeah, cool. Yes. And you learn things that you might not have been aware of before? Yes. Great. Yes. Because I, I really want to, you know, I don't want to just be the person that, um, how can I say it? You know, s sometimes with colorists, you know, they just want to make sure you know enough so that you can just keep hiring them over and over. I, I really want you to be educated in a way that, yes, I love to shop with you, but I love to do specialty shopping more than I love to do basics because I feel like if you can be trained to, to buy your basics, then I can fill in 
the, the, the special pieces that need to be uh, done. And Elizabeth and I have done a lot of that. Right, Elizabeth? <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, and, and she's a, a willing buyer. Uh, <laughs> so, but but I, I want to train you. And so we're going to do something on shopping and how to do that and how to buy. And uh, we'll do style facets and then we'll just keep playing around. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. It couldn't have been more perfect. I love everybody who came to this call. I mean, I just, you know, you're my, <laughs> some of my favorite people. And so I'm really thrilled. Thanks, um, Anne. You're welcome. Thank and you. good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.